All right, what is going on, everybody? Willis here. We're back with another Genshin Impact video. Pretty huge one for you guys today. We're going to be talking a bit about update 1.1. Um, there was a huge live stream that pretty much showed off a ton of gameplay. If you guys aren't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel with bell notifications turned on for all the latest Genshin, Cyberpunk, Godfall, Destiny 2. If you guys play any of those games, this is the place to be. Um, once again, as well, we're still running Genesis Crystal giveaways in the Discord and on Twitch. If you guys want to enter those giveaways, obviously be sure to leave a like on this video. Leave a comment down below. It's not required, but yeah, let's try and get this video to 1,000 likes. That would be awesome. So yeah, Mahoyo just hosted a huge live stream over on pretty much the Chinese equivalent of YouTube. Um, they pretty much did this massive live stream with a few of the voice actors for Zhong Li and the other characters. And... They showed off a bunch of new gameplay, some new cool events. We get to take a look at four new characters. Most of them have been confirmed by leaks, but we get to take a look at actually some gameplay of these new characters, which is pretty dope. So yeah, like I said, the whole live stream was in Chinese, so I'm going to be giving you, I guess, rough translations in English. I want to give a shout out to my friend Chaotic. He was actually helping me with some of the translations, him and his translator. So I'll leave their links down in the video description. But I guess, yeah, let's jump into it. So obviously the live stream started off with the Zhongli voice actor obviously talking to... I don't know if they were the devs or just other voice actors as well. But it pretty much opened up with some gameplay of Child. Now, Child is actually going to play a major role in Update 1.1. He is actually going to be one of the weekly bosses, which is pretty nuts. Um, there's some gameplay later along in the live stream, which is actually insane in the form he actually takes. It's nuts, but yeah. Quick breakdown of Child. Obviously, he is a bow user. He can also do this sort of like stance change, which basically makes him use water swords, sort of like dual blades, and he can also get a water spear. So he is very versatile, super quick attacks, really, really good. Now, the stream was having some issues when it was showing off the Child, Zhongli, and the other two characters' gameplays. So I'll kind of stitch together what was actually seeable in the live stream. But it seems that Child makes these sort of like marks on the enemies. I'm not entirely sure what the marks do. Whether it's like the other characters where you actually mark the enemies, you actually get bonus attack damage or maybe even some healing from attacking these marked enemies. But yeah, Child looks absolutely insane. The next character we have is Diona. She is a cryo ice support. She's kind of like a mini cat girl, which is pretty cool. And she is actually a bow user as well. Now, this is where the stream actually kind of messed up for me, so I don't really have much gameplay of it other than her just firing her bow. But I'm assuming if she's going to be a cryo ice support, she's obviously going to be maybe a healer. I doubt she's going to be a tank. So maybe she's just going to be there to sort of like help your team just heal up really quick, sort of in the background. Kind of like how Chi Chi works with just like applying talismans and obviously just healing sort of passively very slow. So next up, we have Zinyan. Now, she is actually a fire support. She wields... Uh, pretty much, I guess, like, she has a guitar, but she's obviously going to be a Claymore user. She is a fire support. She's going to be really good if you guys are obviously missing any pyro characters that you kind of need to just fill the gap. She's going to come in super handy because by the looks of it, most of her attacks actually just apply fire damage. Which, as you know, the, the only other characters to do that is Diluke. And I guess Klee, but yeah, Klee's sort of like a ranged... Um, wizard but yeah she looks pretty cool from the gameplay we're seeing definitely going to come in super handy i think she's actually going to be a tank judging from some of the moves we're actually seeing in the gameplay but yeah zinyan the fire support so next up we have our cheeky five star zhong li now zhong li is going to be a five star and i'm pretty sure he's going to get his own banner as soon as 1.1 drops correct me if i'm wrong um obviously he's a geo user geo in the game right now like honestly myself I have not used that many Geo characters, um, but looking from the gameplay I've seen, like, Zhong Li looks like an absolute powerhouse. The reason I'm probably going to pick up Zhong Li is because the only 5-star weapon I was actually able to get was obviously the Polearm. Now, the Polearm is super fast in its attacks. Now, what's actually cool really here, when he actually summons his ult on these Hydro Gunners, they kind of just go, like... They basically just turn to stone, like this sort of stun. Now, I don't know if his ultimate pretty much just stuns the enemies, but that's pretty dope. I've never really seen any Geo ability do that, where it basically just stuns them. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said, I don't really play Geo in Genshin. 
but he looks insane. He can also summon these sort of geo construct, similar to the ones located when you actually collect all of the geoculus. Other than that, it hints at obviously there's a lot of story stuff going to be happening with Ningguang and his sort of temple talks a lot about Gan Yu. Obviously, if you see my video yesterday, I was talking about this character. She is actually a cryo bow user as well. There's a lot of talk about Zhao, so maybe he will actually have his own banner in 1.1. I'm pretty sure chat went crazy at one point, so I'm assuming they either announced his own banner or everyone just sort of loves Zhao. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I wanted to show you guys this. So this was actually a cutscene that they showed uh, showing off Child. And I'm assuming this is going to be in the story, which leads up to why he's actually going to be one of the weekly bosses. Now, he takes on this insane form of this... Yeah, ju just look at him, like, menacing as hell, some Devil May Cry character, and this massive galaxy shield. And yes, this is a child. He looks actually insane. Whether or not we're actually going to be able to warp into this form when we actually get child, that would be sick. But yeah, throughout the stream as well, they were actually giving out a bunch of codes. I'm pretty sure the codes were only for the Asia servers. Um, I'll leave them in the video description if you just guys want to go try them. I haven't tried them myself, so I don't know if they work. But it was stuff like books, uh, you got Primo Gems, and they were actually giving out some Moira codes as well. So let's go on to the reputation system. Now, I did mention this in one of my other videos that was sort of data mined. A lot of this stuff was leaked. Obviously, now is confirmed true. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a reputation uh, system in each city, obviously each region. And there's actually four kinds of activities that can give you reputation. You've got stuff like bounties. You've got stuff like finding specific world bosses. And as you basically do these, you can unlock recipes, uh, wings, cool name cards. It's basically like a battle pass, but for reputation. You can also unlock recipes for these new items um, called the Oculus Compass, the Treasure Chest, the Compass, and the Wind Bottle. So let's go over what each item does. So the first one is the Oculus Compass. Now, what this will basically do is when you craft this, uh, basically you use it. So as you can see here, you need like Dandelion Siege and you need some crystals. When you craft it, obviously you'll get like one or depending however many you craft, you basically use the item and it will basically show you the closest Animoculus. And I'm assuming you can craft the Geoculus ones as I can actually see it on the crafting menu. So if you're still after the Animoculus and the Geoculus, this is going to come in super handy. I do recommend you guys go use the interactive map, which I'll leave in the video description. It kind of just shows you where they are anyway. But if you are missing like maybe two or three that you didn't mark off, this is going to come in super handy. So yeah, this one is cool as well. This is the treasure chest compass. Now, it's pretty much in the name. It helps you find treasure chests. And I'm assuming it'll probably just mark it on the map. So yeah, then we have the wind spirits, which will essentially let you store the wind spirits that you find. And you can pretty much just plop them down wherever you want. And it'll pretty much make a wind tunnel. So yeah, these items are pretty much one-time uses. Um, you pretty much consume them and they'll give you a rough area where you need to go check for maybe a chest or the oculus. Next up, we have the Pocket Anchor Point. Now, what this is pretty much in the name, you can actually make a portable waypoint. So, obviously, there's a lot of areas in the game which aren't right next to maybe the farming area that you want. Now, you can pretty much just plop down a waypoint wherever you want. And I think it actually stays there for up to like 24, 48 hours. So, yeah, it's going to be super handy when you just want to go maybe collect some chilies in a really hard to reach spot or maybe even just put it right next to the weekly boss. So you don't have to just walk there all the time. And then after that, we have the pocket cooking pot, which is cool. Pretty much in the name once again, you can pretty much place a portable cooking pot and just cook anywhere you want. What I actually noticed as well 
You can actually hotkey your food now. So I'm assuming this is maybe like another item. But if you actually look in the bottom right, he actually has food on his hotkey. So that's going to be really good, obviously, for the stamina food. You can kind of just pop it on the go without having to open 20 different menus. So yeah, this is pretty cool as well. I'm not entirely sure the full translation on this, but this dude looks like some sort of guy we're going to be like maybe fighting in an event. It looks like he's actually throwing Primo gems at us. So I... I hope that whatever event this is, we, by the looks of it, we have to go find this guy, hunt him down, and basically just beat him up. It doesn't actually look like he's taking any damage. I think we just beat him up, and maybe we have to find him every day, and we just get Primo Gems. And I hope it's actually a lot of Primo Gems, because the last few events have obviously been very lackluster. So, finishing up, they actually showed off the new event, which is coming. With this event, we actually get a Fischl. So, I'm not entirely sure the actual way we get the Fischl, if it's at the end of the event, if you maybe earn so many points. But the event is called the Unreturning Star Event. Think of this like Elemental Crucible 2.0. So I guess the rough translation for this was the unexpected meteor show that brought uh, about unknown changes to the land. Uh, the, this mysterious meteor is causing problems in Taviat. Together with three other friends or solo, you must find out what's going on. So it actually looks like there's different phases to the event, but honestly, it literally just looks like Elemental Crucible 2.0. I'm not entirely sure of the objectives you have to do, but by the looks of it, you have to collect, obviously, the elemental orbs that are dropped by the enemies and then bring it back, I guess, to the main meteor. I'll put a bit of gameplay in the background, but honestly, it was kind of just the casters just absolutely slamming their keyboards. It was so loud, so I won't ruin your eardrums with that. They don't actually show any of the rewards, which was kind of sad. So I'm assuming the leak, which I'll put on screen right now, is some of the rewards we're actually able to acquire. Considering all of the other leaks I've pretty much shown have come true. So here are the rewards on screen right now. But yeah, I think there's one mistake I made with not actually playing the last event that much is the fact that you are given, obviously, the adventurer books, hero's will books to upgrade your characters. If you can, and this event gives a bunch of books, just farm it as much as you can, because as you get to the higher levels, this stuff gets way harder to get. But yeah, that's pretty much everything in the update. It's actually releasing on November 11th, so literally one day after Beyond Light. This is going to be a very hectic November for me covering Destiny Godfall. So yeah, um, if you guys want to keep up to date with all the latest news on Genshin all that good stuff. Jump in the Discord as well, discord.gg slash Willis. Go follow me over on Twitter at Willis Gaming, and we're also going to be streaming live tonight if you're actually watching this on a Friday at 5 p.m. London time. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in my next video and peace.